We're hanging out with the stars of Hollywood North on this edition of Go. Coming up, celebrating BC's best in TV and film. It's <laughs> hilarious. A comedy web series about modern day dads. A community type in minded, and that's what we are. And honoring one of Vancouver's last independent theaters. Welcome to this episode of Go on Shaw TV. I'm Dunia Tozzi and today we're coming to you from the Leo Awards Gala at Hotel Vancouver, celebrating the best and the brightest in the BC entertainment industry. Now in its 17th year, these awards bring together people from television, movies, reality series, web series and much more. Seventeen years, you guys have done such a great job. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's amazing how fast time flies. It has been 17 years. I can't believe it myself. We're pretty steady, however. There's a familiarity around what we do. We ask people to enter. We adjudicate those entries. We have a celebratory weekend where we have a host who introduces a presenter, who opens an envelope, introduces an award recipient, and then we do that over and over again. <laughs> nice to have the opportunity to dress up and feel like a girl and get gussied up and also to see friends. This community in Vancouver is not that big. I know everybody, I love everybody, so it's a real communal celebration. You have been part of it for so long. What do you love about these awards? Um, I love the, the energy that everybody brings to this room. It's the one chance we all get to get everybody in one room together to say hello, to honor each other, to say thank you to each other, and just uh, applause for the work that was done. Because there's so much good work coming out of Vancouver, especially today, that it raises the bar every year. I love the Leos. I mean, it's such a great time to party with all the community and get together and catch up on what everybody's doing and how they're doing and look at all the beautiful dresses and have a glass of wine. Oh, of course, the wine. How does it feel to be nominated and a host at the same time? Is it kind of, is it confusing? Well, you get, you know, the, the butterflies start to go when you're nominated because what happens if they call your name? Well, my butterflies will already be going because I'm hosting, so maybe I'm ahead of the game. Chloe, you uh, do this every year. Tell us about this year's design. Wow, well this year is um, a big year for fashion and the Leos and it's a big year for my spirit collection, which is the work that I do with First Nations artists uh, throughout BC. Uh, the work that you're seeing on the dresses is by Hyde artist Clarence Mills and you can see how some of that detail is really highlighted tonight at the Leo. Well, you're hosting tonight. I, I'm hosting this episode. What advice do you give me, you know, hosting Go? Well, I think you already know how to host Go. I don't think there's any, you could probably give me more advice. You're more practiced. I, I shared it last year. This is the first time for me. So maybe you have some advice for me. Just have fun. Just that's, have that's fun. <laughs> it sure does live up to its reputation of being the biggest red carpet in Western Canada. Later on the show, we're gonna have more interviews with some of the nominees. But first we go to Tiffany Gurdon, who's hanging out with some of the guys who are nominated in the category of best web series for part. A group of grown-ups hanging out on playground equipment at a local park. For the producers of the web series Park, this is a case of life imitating art. It's hilarious! This group of writers and actors are brainstorming ideas for future episodes of their show, a comedy about stay-at-home dads who struggle with the reality of who they are compared to who they thought they were going to be. I just sort of thought it was be a funny idea, a funny show to deal with some of these issues about being kind of a, a, a sort of a, a parked parent, a, a parked adult, right? Um, and uh, not moving forward, but feeling, you know, trying to find your way. Both Adam and fellow writer Siobhan McCarthy created the series together based on their own observations from parenthood. For me, I was really attached to the subject matter because my son's father had been uh, very hands-on in the beginning. 
and he found that the parenting experience at home was not a pleasurable one. Everything's set up for mummy and me to the point that he felt like a pervert trying to change our child in the washroom because there's no change rooms in men's gender washrooms. So I thought, okay, there's an opportunity here. Like there are more men at home and being hands-on than ever before. The web series features four dad friends, one of whom is childless. They often meet up at the local park to muddle through life's trials and tribulations while the kids play. The writers of this edgy show push the envelope when it comes to on-screen drinking, smoking, nudity and profanity, things that would not be allowed if broadcast on a conventional network. For me, the, just the freedom to be able to, to uh, yeah, put any, uh, any crazy idea out there, whether it, it works or not is the big question, not whether, you know, uh, not whether it's too edgy or not. So we're not lo we don't censor ourselves in terms of what the content is, and only if the content is good or works. Writing for the web is a very different world than writing for broadcast. I mean, you're working in condensed minutes. You're competing with a lot of traffic. I mean, to try and hold somebody's attention for two minutes with a Facebook status update constantly interrupting or a tweet or whatever else. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we were being true to our vision and kind of creating this day in the life of. Most of the actors in this series are experienced and recognize the old adage, never work with animals or kids. Yet Park tackles one of the two topics face on. Only one of them is an actual father. I have two children, um, as Jesse does. I am not with the mom, as Jesse is not with uh, with uh, the mother of his children and and knowing what that is like where it's getting up early in the morning when there's nobody to support you you can't be hung over you can't go out all night when you have children you grow up very very quickly and that's uh, uh, that's what uh, Jesse is sort of struggling with all right David your kids are in some of the episodes with you what's it like working with them it was pretty crazy um, my uh, my son got to do some cursing and he got to pepper spray a, a guy in the face oh you not allowed to do it home eh? that's exactly right uh, my daughter, she got to have a, a bit of a meltdown in the, and uh, run away from some creep on the street. It was fun. It was, I was really nervous for them. I wanted them to do really well, and they did. I was so proud of my little monkeys. Season one of the series is made up of six major episodes, in addition to flashback stories and supplemental material, totaling 27 unique videos for viewers to watch. Park has scooped up several web series awards in Canada already, but the real prize is yet to be won. Season two is what we want. I mean, awards are wonderful, but Adam and I have been always very clear we're not out there for awards. and. We just want to get the show out there and we want to be able to continue. The Parks team also aims to reach a more international audience with their series. And perhaps one day, when the reality is right, the hope is that Parked can be made into a full half-hour broadcast comedy show. From King Crest Park in Vancouver, I'm Tiffany Gurdon for Go on Shaw TV. Best of luck to the Parked team. To watch full episodes of their series, you can go to parkedattheshow.com. We've got much more coming up on this red carpet edition of Go, including interviews with the nominees of the TV show Motive, which is nominated for a whopping 21 awards. So stay tuned. Up next, she baked a plum pudding murder mystery. On set in Squamish. I grew a beard. It took me three to four months. And, and dramatic series and motion picture Leo nominees on the red carpet. Hi, I'm Diane Brown, Artistic Director of Ruby Slippers Theatre, and I'd like to invite you to the Jesse Richardson Theatre Awards. The Jesse Awards annually celebrate outstanding achievements in our professional Vancouver theatre community. Come meet the actors, the directors, the designers, all the people who bring you wonderful shows each and every year which inspire and enrich our lives. Come to the Jessies. Raise a glass for your Vancouver theatre community. Monday, June 22nd at the fabulous Commodore Ballroom. For more information, go to jessies.ca. I'll see you there.
Welcome back to GO, coming to you from the 17th annual Leo Awards at Hotel Vancouver. Now, we're surrounded by filmmakers tonight, but in the next story, we go to a place where we can watch their final product. And it's not your typical theater. The Dunbar Theater in Vancouver has been part of the community for more than 80 years. The Dunbar Theater, it's a community-minded theater where you'll see people that have been your neighbors for five to ten years. And in those five to ten years, you sort of said, hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. And then you'll go on to your very wake. But what happens is when you meet them here at the community, at this theater, you'll start to have long, engaged uh, talks. They'll bring you into a more of a, a community type of minded. And that's what we are. Opened in 1935, the Dunbar Theatre has been a gathering place for its surrounding community for several generations. Just imagine how many kids have seen their first movie here, how many teens have gone on their first date here, and how many bags of popcorn have been consumed here. Speaking of which... We make the most, the best popcorn because our popcorn has got to be the worst for you. If you eat our popcorn th more than three times in one week, we require you to go and get a checkup at your doctor or from a dietitian. And while anyone who's ever been here has seen that popcorn and the silver screen before, Ken gave us a peek at something you don't normally see, the projection booth. The Dunbar Theatre is an older theatre, so it was actually built when, when uh, film was actually quite flammable and would explode. So you notice that we have really thick concrete around here. And this is sort of a blast door mentality that we would have back when the projectionists, back in the early days, and it was volatile, that they'd be working with it. The next stage that we would have is we would have this, which is a reel, and I'm gonna put it on to the projector right there, when you would run, uh, the movies would run in 40 minute increments and be switched from uh, projector to projector. This projector right here is a, um, a projector that's been around since uh, the 70s or before the 70s, and it was a dual projection system. You'd have two of these running in your theater, and they'd run for about 40 minutes on a, a reel like this, and you'd switch it over during the actual film and no one would notice that. And we used this up until about 15 years ago. So let's put this up here, and it would just go like this. You put your film, would be loaded on over there, it'd run through the projector and it would go there. The next stage that we had is over here. Here is now the present day technology that we have. It's a digital projection system. We have our sound rack that's right over here, provides for all of our sound. And here is the motherboard. If you take a look here on the floor, which typically shouldn't be on the floor, but it is, that's Jurassic Park being uploaded to our computer server so that we can be able to play it. Everything's done through here, everything's done remotely, and we can actually have our movies uh, sent to us via the internet in encrypted manner. So this is where we are right now. Recent years have seen over $200,000 go into renovating the theater with new seats and top-of-the-line audio and video equipment, bringing the Dunbar far from where it started 80 years ago in some ways. But they still celebrate the theater's proud tradition, and this year we'll see the release of a locally produced 12-minute feature film about the landmark. We're touching on everything. We're touching on every decade, the film styles that came from those decades, the actors, the, the people, and we're creating models because we don't have enough pictures of the theater, so we're, we're actually shooting them this weekend, which will be very exciting. Their film will complete production this summer and release at a red carpet event at the Dunbar later this year. It's all impressive to see after the theater nearly shut down for good before Ken took over in 1998. It has that feeling like you step back in time. They're doing the exact same thing they did decades before, standing in line to get into the theater, going up to get their popcorn, turning around and seeing Mr. Smith, who lives three houses down, and saying, hi, how are you? You want to watch these classic theaters, be they comedy, be they dramatic, or be they the quote-unquote chick flick type of deals, in community uh, type of environments where you're sitting around people from your community. And that's what the Dunbar is. That's the spirit of the Dunbar. That's the spirit of film. You can check the theater out firsthand at Dunbar and 30th. You can also contribute to their film at fundraiser.com. In Vancouver, I'm Paul McClellan for Go on Shaw TV. I would love to try out that popcorn to see what all the hype is about. To learn more about the Dunbar Theatre and what's playing there, you can visit their Facebook page. Now, because of the low Canadian dollar and the competitive tax credits, the BC TV and film industry is experiencing a boom. And that's benefiting towns like Squamish with its beautiful scenery that's attracting a lot of filmmakers.
Like any pastor beginning to write a sermon, it's important to find a space to be alone with your thoughts. For Glenn Davies, he has no choice. My office and books and shelves and everything's been cleared out. Um, all I have here is my, my laptop to work on my sermon. That's because for the past week, Vancouver film crews have been using his office, along with other downtown locations, to film the latest Hallmark movie starring Alison Sweeney. On the first day, which was two days ago, they used the windows here in my office as a sound booth for a radio station. It's a cool thing. Hallmark Films does a good job. They've been amazing. With this church's Ledge Cafe, located directly below Glenn's office, having sat empty since December due to other commitments, crews were quick to jump on the space as well, converting the downtown storefront into a cozy, festive bakery in the span of 24 hours. This one is Murder, She Baked, a Plum Pudding Murder Mystery. So it's a Christmas movie. Set deck, art department, they supplied trees and presents, garland, decorations, Christmas lights. What, you know, when you think Christmas, we had it. Part of the reason that we chose this was the interior look of it and how spacious it is. It was perfect in that it had all of the equipment that we need as far as like an espresso machine and a counter. Having buildings of this size uh, in, in this kind of an environment is very rare. With 20 productions having been made in Squamish this year alone, seeing film equipment and odd props lining the sidewalks has become a normal sight for store owners, with the occasional set noise and crowd a small price to pay. With hundreds of movies having been shot here in town, Squamish has never been more on the map, with Glenn one of many business owners lending their shop for film crews, the benefits of shutting down go beyond financial. To stimulate the, the building owners in terms of the investment, in their own buildings, you kind of need to uh, trigger their imagination. And certainly the film industry coming down here and putting a mural on this building or a facade on this building just sparks people's imagination and then they can visualize it better and go, oh, it doesn't take much to actually, you know, take it up a notch. For Glenn, walking downstairs to see his once empty cafe, now stocked with beautiful treats, displays and holiday cheer, motivates this businessman to reopen even more. This used to be our pegboard where we would have our menu for the Ledge Cafe and they've replaced it with a chalkboard. My daughter-in-law, she was just here and I showed her, I said, look, they did this and they did that. And some of the things, for example, the coat hook thing, right? We always talk about where are we gonna put people's coats in the winter besides over their chairs. And so yeah, it, it's neat to see someone else come in and even if it's a set decoration, they have ideas. With those ideas, sometimes remaining permanent. Occasionally, if we decided that, oh, well, this color scheme won't work, we're gonna have to paint the walls this color. Well, when we've painted them, then we sometimes give the, uh, the, the business the option. We say, well, we can paint it back to its original color, or what do you think of this, this color? And sometimes they go, this is better. With plans to hopefully have the Ledge Cafe back up and running this summer, for Glenn, having Cruz turn his space upside down may have been just what this pastor needed to start again, with that inspiration for a new beginning right under his feet. It's been painful being closed up in my office when it's quiet all day. It's been great to have this crew in here. We posted on Facebook, this is what's happening at the ledge. We've had most of our previous customers coming down and saying, so when this is done, you are going to reopen, right? It's been encouraging. In Squamish, I'm Vanessa Ibera for Go West Coast. Did you know that one of the most popular films shot in Squamish is Happy Gilmore by Adam Sandler? Most of the golfing scenes were shot at Furry Creek Golf Center. Stay tuned for more great content coming to you on this edition of Go Adelia Awards. After the break, Food Flicks makes a splash at the Leo's. Twilight, but not the Twilight movies looked good. And we ask, what's the best locally shot film or TV show? My name is Derek Juno, and I help run Mealshare, a nonprofit that's revolutionizing the Canadian restaurant industry in Canada. How Mealshare works is we partner with restaurants, and we put our little Mealshare logo beside a few menu items. When a customer orders one of these Mealshare branded menu items, they get their meal just like normal, but they're also providing another meal to someone in need. No extra cost, no extra action. Just buy one, give one. We just launched our program in 11 fantastic Vancouver restaurants, including the Greek by Anatoly, the Acorn, and Bricks restaurant. Go to Mealshare.ca to find out more about us and our 35 other restaurant partners. Thank you.
Welcome back to this edition of Go, coming to you from the 2015 Leo Awards. Two of the hottest award categories this evening are the motion picture and dramatic series categories, with Motive and Edward leading the pack. And we got the chance to talk to some of the nominees. A film about the godfather of motion picture to a comedy about a woman who pretends to be pregnant to fit in. The motion picture category was what were presented at the Leos. You're nominated for the movie Edward, which is based on the life of uh, Edward Mybridge, right? Uh, tell us a little bit about the role. Uh, Edward Mybridge is basically the godfather of motion picture. He's the man who created basically all of this. It's uh, a story that's never been told and it's a character that's never been played before. And how was it playing uh, Edward? You know, I know you had to grow a bit of a beard and get in the character. <laughs> I grew a beard, it took me three to four months, and then a lot of peroxide and bleach. We bleached the beard. And then it was uh, getting to work and doing a lot of research. Excuse me, who are you? You see things other people don't. I'm pregnant. Prego Lynn, you know, a lot of women can relate to that movie. What's the secret behind uh, the success of the movie? You know, in some ways I think it was luck. When I started writing uh, the film, I got some feedback that people weren't going to be interested in um, a comedy about women's relationship with other women and that I needed to bring her relationship with a man to the foreground. And then Bridesmaids came out and it just blew that argument out of the water. And um, I just, I think the, the film hit at the right time. Jason, Black Flight, how does it feel to be nominated for 10 awards at the Leos? It, it feels, it feels wonderful. This project, I, I wrote the script 18 years ago, so finally being able to get this out, knowing that, that, that people are actually enjoying the experience, that means a lot to me, especially for my cast. It's inspired by a true event, so it's kind of cool to have something that's got a real bearing to it, right? And it's a gritty film. We don't have a lot of Canadian films with that gritty, right? So that's, you know, that's what attracted me instantly. London Montgomery's been murdered. The dramatic series category was just as diverse, with the crime drama Motive in the lead. Kristen, wow, 21 nominations for Motive. How do you feel about that? I am thrilled. I could not be happier. You know, the people that we work with to make this show, Every single person that puts their time and heart and energy into this show are splendid people. They're an amazing group of people to work with, so 21 nominations feel so good to know that everybody's being acknowledged. And it's the third season of the show, and it's averaging, what, like 1 million viewers? We average 1.3 million viewers every Sunday night, which we're very proud of. I'm going to ruin this game. How does it feel to be nominated for three awards tonight? It makes me feel like I belong, to be completely honest with you. It, um, I have been nominated before, it's always a real pleasure, uh, but to be able to be here and feel like I'm a part of it to that degree and then presenting on top of it, it makes me feel even more so like it's my community. I was lucky to visit the sets of some of the TV shows nominated tonight, including Continuum, One Calls the Heart, and Witches of East End. And you can find these stories on our YouTube page. Now going back to web series, up next we feature another web entry that's created by four guys who are local and it involves a bit of animation. Introducing Foodflix. Foodflix started with a picture of an apple and drew a little face on it and arms and legs and showed the boys and like, hey, wouldn't this be cool? Like, I think we could like animate this. Like, cause at that point it was just like a little image. Yeah, yeah you but know. that was one of those, one of those ideas where like as soon as he showed us like all the rest of the three of us were like, that's, we gotta do something like that. I don't know what exactly yet, <laughs> but that's it. Cause it wasn't just like an apple with a face on it, you know, it was like, it was an apple being thrown on a road and it was like being splattered all over and he drew this face on it like, oh, this yeah. guy that was like getting blown away kind of thing. And it was like, there was so much life yeah. in this like, lifeless object. There's definitely uh, strengths that each one of us have that I think we kind of, we all recognize and, you know, like Nathan and I will be more on the art side of things and these guys are more on like the script side and the filmmaking or like the, the writing, the writing the side writing of things. Yeah, because yeah, I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> or read. <laughs> A. B. C. C. Clara. Yowza. She's a good apple. Common 
comment we get is how do you how do you how do you work with your brothers or you're like I hate my brothers you know like, I can never work with my family and we're like we totally agree and then, yeah <laughs> it's like now working together because we've been doing it for so long there's just like complete honesty at all times you know you know there's never that like I don't know I've yeah, never right. felt that exact same comfort in working with like somebody else that you don't know there's always like that little bit of like politeness and like making sure and this yeah. is just like you know, tell each other if it's crap or if For it's sure. a page one rewrite, which it always is. <laughs> I think it's just the basics is just to entertain people like we all want to tell stories and make jokes and goof around and make other people laugh and entertain kind of thing and that seemed like a good, good way to go kind of thing. We were wrong, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Plus we're not qualified to do anything else. <laughs> That too. That's university. So Apparently, you need a degree to be a doctor. I don't know. <laughs> That's not what my patients tell me. <laughs> Come on, man. You gotta stop doing this. It's worth noting that our own videographer, Matt Gilroy, did some voiceover work for this series with the role of the potato. To find full episodes, you can visit their YouTube page. Now, there are a lot of incredible TV shows and films that are shot right here in Vancouver. So our own Paul McClellan went on the streets of Vancouver to find out what's the best locally shot TV show or film. What's your favorite Vancouver produced TV show or movie of all time? Uh, I'm not really sure. I, I want to say Mission Impossible because they tried so hard to hide Vancouver as like India and different places like that. I, I think that's hilarious. I grew up with the X Files, so yeah, I'm looking for looking forward to the reboot. I used to really, really love the Twilight books, and it was filmed in Vancouver, but I'm not a big fan of the movies. <laughs> so my favorite like series concept, I would say, it's probably Twilight, but. Well, the Twilight movies looked good. Well, they looked really good. And that was Vancouver. The acting. <laughs> but they looked awesome, so. I hope none of the actors from Twilight watch this. I'm still following Supernatural, so that's what I'm, yeah. that's what I'm in for. I was going to say Supernatural, too. That's one of the best shows on Vancouver. Flash is on, too, isn't it? Flash is Vancouver? Yeah, so yeah, I watch that when I get a chance. So I'm in for Flash. <laughs> You're going to bring Walking Dead now here. <laughs> yeah, walk, the Splinter or the uh, spinoff yeah, show. The, the LA series or something like that, right? Yeah, that's, that's going to be great. Maybe I can be a, one of those walking zombies, too. I really liked Fringe. Uh, was MacGyver produced in Vancouver? Yeah, it was. Yeah, time favorite. X-Men. Was it X-Men? X-Men 2. Yeah. I've heard the 100 is filmed. No, and when there's this one with this guy who goes really fast and he speeds around. <laughs> I've like, heard of these two shows, but I don't know anything. I'd love to see that as the title like in the TV Guide. The guy who runs really fast. <laughs> The Flash. Flash, the Flash. It's incredible to know that so many productions are shot right here in Vancouver. But my favorite has to be X-Men because I love superhero movies. Now, time's up for this edition of Go. We'd like to congratulate all the winners and the nominees, including our own Dream Homes team who are nominated for a couple of categories. Make sure you tune into Shot TV in the next couple of weeks for some coverage of the awards and for airtimes, you can visit our website. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.